All right, guys, so nice to see you. Thank you so much, first of all, for all the questions you dropped on YouTube and Instagram. And I'm gonna be answering all of the questions. There's time codes below for each of the questions. So if you're bored with one question, just feel free to skip to another one. And before we get into all of the things, you probably are wondering what is this uh, whole setup here? Well, this is one of the rooms that has one of the best sounds. It's my storage area right now because the one update that I want to give you is that I've moved countries. I've moved away from uh, Denmark to Portugal. And yeah, this is going to be my home. And another update is that I have actually a separate room uh, in this house where I can build my studio. So there's a lots of good stuff I'm going to be sharing with you, how I'm building the studio, what gear I use for the studio. So make sure to check out the future videos and let's get into the questions. So, and the first question is from Grobnik. What's the most versatile prime lens for the A6000 series cameras for street product photography and portrait? The average Scotch addict already replied to this question. He said 30 or 50 millimeter um, is a good option. I would say the same 30 and 50 millimeters is in between that range is something that gives you wide enough and not zoomed enough um, that gives you this versatility. And as he says, the Sigma f1.4, 30 millimeter or the 56 millimeter, both of them are great options. You can miss with those lenses. Conwolf asks, with all the new lenses you own and tested, be it a crop or full frame, which is your favorite and why? I love this question. And I would say my most favorite is the Sony 85 millimeter f1.8. That's the full frame version and I've used it on a crop sensor camera a lot, um, as well as on full frame. I love it because it just gives a very, very unique look that it's really hard to get with other lenses. It's a telephoto lens, if you will, uh, especially on the crop and gives a really, really nice view. Uh, and I use it for all sorts of things. It's not the most versatile one, but the one that I love the most because of the focal length. And a question from Slumalfs. Is it okay if I want to buy a6000 plus the 85mm f1.8 as my first camera? As your first camera, absolutely yes, a6000 is going to be amazing, but I would say no for the lens because the 85mm on a6000 is going to be approximately 130mm. I know you guys love the video of the POV where I shoot with that lens, but as for beginner, for your first lens, it is very, very hard to handle this lens because it's just so zoomed in. You have to be so far away if you want to do anything with it. So for a beginner, as I answered in the previous, in the first question, the 30 millimeter would be my, my first choice or rather get a zoom lens instead of a, such a prime lens. But A6000 is definitely a good choice. Yvonne asks, how long ago and what got you interested in photography and which was your first camera? My first camera was uh, the one I bought myself was uh, Canon 1100D. Um, it was a fun camera. It came with the kit lens and a telephoto lens. It was amazing. And that was approximately what, like 12 years ago. What got me interested? It's really hard to say. I think there's so many beautiful places around the world and with a camera, you can capture it in a way that sometimes you can't just do it with your, with your own eyes and you can see things that you sometimes would miss if you wouldn't have a camera. So maybe, maybe that's what got me interested. F shoots and just everything has the same question. Is it worth switching to another camera of the Sony a6000 range if you still have the a6000? If you are doing photography only, I would say rather invest in lenses, especially good quality glass. That will give you a lot more opportunities to grow as a photographer. Upgrading just the camera body to something else, you will, you will not feel so much difference uh, unless you really need it for professional work. However, if you are um, gonna do video, then definitely I would say it's worth upgrading, especially to something like Sony A6400 or now a really good option is the Sony ZV E10 um, if you want to do some video work. And Jimmy asks, why did you choose Sony camera? Well, first of all, yeah, I was shooting Canon for more than eight years, I believe. I was shooting with 60D and then I wanted to upgrade to full frame and I was looking at uh, lots of different options and from the Canon side, there was nothing that I really liked for the price and what the performance I was getting. Sony at the time uh, offered a really, really nice um, a bundle with the kit lens and a 50 millimeter f1.8 and I thought that's a really good option. 
and so I got into the Sony ecosystem, if you will. So at the time, I was not really informed uh, about my decision. It was just a good offer. But looking back now, I know that I did the best absolute choice. And, and particularly, it's because of the, the e-mount. And because the Sony has a, a wonderful e-mount which you know offers you so many lenses and now that i'm looking at what canon is doing with the rf eve and all the other m mount lenses and whatnot they just messed it up so i'm really happy that i um actually stuck with the with the sony canon of course make good lenses good cameras but because of the mount i'm very happy uh, that i made that choice for sony Chromris asks, Sveiks, hi by the way, Sveiki. <laughs> I would like to get some good bright zoom lens for my Sony A6000. Can you suggest? Zoom lens? Yeah. So f2.8 will be your choice. Uh, and in my opinion, there's just two lenses, the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter f2.8 or the Tamron 17 to 70 f2.8. Both of them are excellent. I've done uh, a review for the Sigma lens, but I know that Tamron is also really, really good. Wide range, it will cover everything from the wide to the zoom, and that should give you a really nice and bright lens. Check them out, and I think you'll be happy with them. Roverboy asks, what about more heavy range street photography POV? I have to wait for the winter in Portugal to come because there's no rain in the summer. But when that comes, I have that idea. So of course, stay tuned. There will be more rainy POV videos. Connor asks, shooting in light rain, rain question again. Any recommended waterproofing for A6000? First of all, try not to shoot in the rain with A6000 because it's not weather sealed. Uh, you can damage your camera. What I do, I cover all the ports uh, so nothing, no water can get in anywhere. Um, I wipe it off very often, but actually what you can do, there are these little pouches you can order online uh, and just have your camera in there and just have the lens out. Kai doesn't have a question, but he has a, a statement. Oh no, gonna miss seeing Copenhagen from your lens. No, you will not because I have about two or three videos that I still haven't edited that are shot in Copenhagen and they are the POV videos. So you're definitely gonna see more of that. And also I plan on going back and forth between Copenhagen and Portugal. So I'm definitely gonna bring the camera next time I go there. So you're definitely gonna see more of Copenhagen. Omar asks, planning to stay for long in Portugal? Yes, my life is now here. Um, so I'm planning to stay here for a long time, so, but I'm also going to be traveling a lot, so you will see a lot, not only from Portugal, but other countries as well. Mohamed asks, how to adjust focus for video on Sony a6000? Um, I would say I use autofocus the most of the times, because I think the autofocus on that camera works well if you have a good lens. Maybe just narrow it down to uh, the zone where you want um, the camera to focus to help the camera and you should be good. Kai Fikirgri asks, how do you get the same editing look every single time? For those who follow me on uh, Instagram, you see I have a quite consistent feed. Hard to answer, my preset is what something I use quite a lot uh, to edit the, the, the pictures. But the other thing is that the mood in general, you know, I don't go shoot sunny day and then super rainy day. As you see, my all of my photos are kind of already in that mood with the clouds or with the, you know, a little bit of mood and, and rain and, and stuff. So that already gives by itself a base to work with very good. And then uh, my photos are never oversaturated, so you don't see a lot of colors. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just the mindset of editing the photos in a way you want them to look um, to fit the mood better. And I'm actually going to be making video about editing um, several of them. So check out in the future, especially about these moody greens. I, I really want to make a video about that. So I'll tell you all about that, how I edit my pictures. Next up, we have just a couple of more questions. Dafa asks, what is the best lens for Sony a6000? I don't think there is one lens that is the best lens. The question is, what is the best lens for you? And then you have to ask yourself what you need it for. Obviously, like the G Master of Sony lenses are one of the best, but I don't think you're going to spend two or three thousand bucks for just a lens. Um, so really consider what you need it for. And is it worth for you to pay that price? Aris asks, have you ever shot using a filter? 
First of all, for videos, yes, I use uh, ND filter, variable ND filters all the time. I do not use the filters too much into photography, to be honest, but there's a lot of good filters and, and you can achieve quite a lot of good effects with, with them. I'm just too lazy to bring the tripod because if you want to use the filters you, uh, for long exposure and stuff like that, you probably should uh, get a tripod as well. And keeping on that topic, MXT M asks, how to choose a beginner ND filter? Ah, that's a very good question. If again, we are talking about videos and variable ND filters, uh, you really need to see the quality because the really cheap ones, I've bought ones and they're not that good. The 30, $50 ones, I don't think they work too well. I would go with something like starting from $100. I personally use the Freewell ND filters and I absolutely love them. They're not the most expensive ones. They're not cheap either but the quality really, really is there and I love those filters a lot and I can recommend. 11th Hour asks, what keeps you motivated in photography? I would say the challenge and I look a lot of uh, other creators, what they do, what they create and um, I get my motivation of, you know, always trying to get to the next level. Sometimes it takes a year or two for me to get there where I wanted to. But uh, yeah, day by day, you will not see the progress, but looking back, you'll definitely see a progress. And I think that is what mainly keeps me motivated just to go forward, to try something else, try something new and, and see how I can do it myself. And if I can do it, I think that's, that's a lot of fun. And on a challenge note, uh, Ivars says, take a challenge, go analog, shoot film for one week. Um, and Azerax is also asking, do you like film photography? Actually, I have not tried film photography so long, but I did make a, a video. It's an analog film POV street photography I did with my buddy Julian. Um, so I just have to edit the video. I think we did a really great job. We we went out, we took a lot of shots, then we went to de develop the pictures and you know, it's just like one take. I think it's a lot of fun um, and I would see it more like that for fun. I wouldn't see it, you know, in a, in a more creative or professional way. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good challenge. I could definitely do that. Maverick asks, Sony 50 millimeter F1.2 is the best prime lens? Again, might be the best for you, but definitely as, as far as I know, this is the G Master lens and as all the G Master lineup, excellent lenses. And just everything asks, can I shoot short film in low light on Sony A6000? Yes, you can. Just get the prime lens and get a prime lens that uh, has a fast aperture like f1.4 1.8 so you have plenty of light in the picture and you can you know not have to crank up the iso and he also asks what is your photo editing setup um, i edit my photos in adobe lightroom classic and then if i have some final touches and some um, anything i need to do i finish it off in photoshop um, akmad asks for composition tips and tricks in street photography I'm gonna do a separate video about that. It's a really broad topic. I think I'm gonna just go out, do a POV, and then I'm gonna talk about the composition tips and tricks and why I do this behind every picture. So stay tuned. Kevin Adrian asks, how to take clear pictures in the low light situation when shooting at F5 or F6 on Sony A6000? That's a really big challenge on A6000. You cannot really crank up the ISO because it's an older camera um, and yeah, I think you have to use a light, a, a flash or something like that, because otherwise, if you don't want to shoot in f1.8 or 1.4, then you definitely need to use some light to, um, some external light to compensate for that. And Jello asks, best external flash for Sony A6000? I haven't used any flashes. I will be very honest. I'm not a fan of flash. I'm a fan of uh, continuous lights. Um, but I think Godox produces a lot of good flashes. I see them, um, you know, professional photographers using all the time. I think the price range is also really big, so you can find something for yourself. And finally, it's not a question from Ashwina, but it's a statement. All your recent photos posted on Instagram stories were just lit. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashwina. And guys, if you are not following me on Instagram, please do, because I do post a lot of stories and try to post some pictures as well. So you see what's up, what's going on in my life. Um, and yeah, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and um, write some more questions in the comments if I didn't answer some of them. Um, and I intend to do kind of this video in the future as well. So stay tuned and I see you all in the next video very soon. Bye.